ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಕ್ಲೌಡ್ಸ್ಗೆ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ನನ್ನ ಹೆಸರು ನಿಮಿಲಾ ಸೊ ಇವತ್ತಿನ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಪಿ ಯು ಸಿನ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಆದಂಥ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯುಲ ಬೇಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ಹೆರಿಟೆನ್ಸ್ನ ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸನ್ನು ನೋಡ್ತಾ ಹೋಗೋಣ ಸೊ ಫಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಡಿ ಎನ್ ಎ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಪಾಲಿ ನ್ಯೂಕ್ಲಿಯೋಟೈಡ್ ಚೈನ್ ಸೊ ಡಿ ಎನ್ ಎ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಿಲ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಪಾಲಿ ನ್ಯೂಕ್ಲಿಯೋಟೈಡ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಅಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿ ಆಕ್ಸಿ ರೈಬೋ ನ್ಯೂಕ್ಲಿಕ್ ಆ್ಯಸಿಡ್ಸ್ ನ್ಯೂಕ್ಲಿಯೋಟೈಡ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ನ್ಯೂಕ್ಲಿಯೋಸೈಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ನೈಟ್ರೋಜಿನಸ್ ಬೇಸ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಪೆಂಟೋಸ್ ಶುಗರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಲಿಂಕ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಎನ್ ಗ್ಲೈಕೋಸೈಡಿಕ್ ಬಾಂಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಅಡಿನೋಸಿನ್ ಡೈಆಕ್ಸಿ ಅಡಿನೋಸಿನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೈಟಿನಿನ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಅದೇ ನ್ಯೂಕ್ಲಿಯೋಟೈಡ್ ಬಂದಾಗ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ನ್ಯೂಕ್ಲಿಯೋಸೈಡ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ದ ಫಾಸ್ಫೇಟ್ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಲಿಂಕ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಫಾಸ್ಫೋಟ್ ಡಯಸ್ಟರ್ ಬಾಂಡ್ ಸೊ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ನ್ಯೂಕ್ಲಿಯೋಸೈಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನ್ಯೂಕ್ಲಿಯೋಟೈಡ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ನಾವು they were suitable to grow on synthetic mediums in laboratories and their life cycle is completed within 2 weeks and the single mating now coming to the morgan's experiment so many nucleotides are going to link together to 3 prime 5 prime phosphodiester bonds to form the polynucleotide chain as in dna and rna now in the course of formation of this polynucleotide chain a phosphate moiety will remain free at 5 prime end of ribose sugar wherein 5 prime end of the polymer chain will remain free i mean will remain free and one oh group will remain free at 3 prime end of ribose which is 3 prime of the polymer chain so this is how it is going to happen so idu on the free molecule and il on the oh free molecule now coming to double helix structure model of the dna now scientists involved frederick mischer first identified dna as an acidic substance which was present in nucleus and named it nuclein then wilkins and franklin produced x ray diffraction data for the dna structure so ee x ray diffraction data band mele it was more easier next came the watson and crick model who proposed a double helix structural model for dna based on the x ray diffraction data and then came erwin chargaff who proposed that double stranded dna ratios at and cg remain the same and they are equal to one another now features of this double helix structure so in a dna two polynucleotide chains are coiled to form a helix now sugar phosphate will form backbone of the helix while bases will project towards each other sorry inwards to each other now complementary base pairs with each other through hydrogen bonds so complementary base pairs are formed with the help of uh, these each other okay through the, the hydrogen bonds now purines always pair with their corresponding pyrimidines and adenine will pair with thymine through two hydrogen bonds while guanine will pair with cytosine through three hydrogen bonds now the helix is right handed which is pitch 3.410 base pairs in each turn now the plane of one base pair will stack over the other in a double helix so now ee one pair o innond pair ina mele ee rithi stack aagta hogutha and this is what is going to form this double helix now this provides stability to the helix along with hydrogen bonding now packing of the dna helix so distance between two consecutive base pairs in a dna is equals to 0.3 nanometer pan 34 nanometer which is 0.34 into 10 to the power minus 9 meters so total number of base pairs in human dna is 6.6 into 10 to the power 9 base pairs and total length of human dna is 0.34 into 10 to the power minus 9 into 0.6 into 10 to the power 9 which is approximately 2.2 meters so 2.2 meters is large to accommodated in the nucleus which is of 10 to the power minus 6 meters now coming to the organization of the dna in prokaryotes so now they do not have nucleus so dna is scattered in prokaryotes and in certain regions called nucleotides the dna which is negatively charged is organized in large loops and it is held by proteins which are positively charged now next organization of eukaryotes i mean dna in eukaryotes now they have positively charged basic proteins called the histones which are positive and basic because of the presence of positive and basic amino acid residues and lysines and arginine are the residues now histone octamer unit of eight molecules of histone is the histone octamer and dna which is negatively charged will wind around the histone octamer which is positively charged forming nucleosome now features of this double helix structure 
So in a DNA, two polynucleotide chains are coiled to form a helix. Now this sugar phosphate is going to form the backbone of this helix, wherein they are going to project inwards to each other. Now complementary base pairs with purine through hydrogen bonds and purines always pair with their corresponding pyrimidines, which is adi adenine with thymine and guanine with cytosine. So now this is the DNA structure. So this is the core of the histone molecule and the histone octamer and H1 histone and the DNA. Now next, one nucleosome has approximately 200 base pairs of DNA and nucleosomes in a chromatin will resemble beads which are present on the strings. Now beads on string structure in chromatin are further packed from to form the chromatin fibers respectively and they are going to coil further and get condensed to form the chromosomes at the time of metaphase. Now non-histone chromosomal proteins like additional set of the proteins which are required for the packaging of chromatin at higher level. So these are such type of cro uh, chromosomes or the proteins which are required at the time of packaging of this chromatin fibers network. Now coming to chromatin, chromatin nalli yaradthara, euchromatin and heterochromatin. So what is this euchromatin? It is loosely packed regions of chromatin which will stain light. So U is coloring, okay. Now transcriptionally active chromatin, it is a transcriptionally active one. And now this heterochromatin is a densely packed region of the chromatin which will stain dark. So this heterochromatin is going to stain dark and it is transcriptionally inactive. Now coming to transforming principle which is Hersey's and Chase experiment and the properties of genetic material. Now coming to the discovery of DNA as a genetic material. So from here the discover, I mean DNA was discovered as a genetic material. Now though principles of inheritance and discovery of chromosomes in the nucleus were achieved at a long time back, there was confusion about which molecule acted as the genetic material. So, the transforming principle is now known. Griffith performed experiments with bacterial like streptococcus pneumoniae and this had two strains, one to S strain and the other one was R strain. Now, S strain bacteria was smooth colony producing uh, strain and it was done on culture plate and it had a polysaccharide coat and it was a virulent which caused pneumonia. Now, coming to the R strain which was the rough strain and it produced rough colonies on the plate and they did not have any polysaccharide growth and this was non-virulent which was it did not cause pneumonia. Now this was how Griffith did his experiment. He took the living virulent strain and he injected it to a mouse and the mouse died and he injected a virulent strain which was non-virulent strain the mouse survived and he heat killed the virulent strain and then injected the mouse was still alive and he injected both a virulent and I mean which was non-virulent and virulent strain the mouse again died. Now live R strain in the presence of heat killed a strain produced virulence because somehow R strain bacteria is transformed by heat killed S strain bacteria. Now hence it is concluded that there must be the transfer of some genetic material here. Now biochemical nature of this transforming material Avery, McLeod and McCarty worked to determine the biochemical nature of genetic material which was responsible for this uh, transformation procedure. Now heat killed S strain plus live R strain transformation happened and the mouse died. And heat killed S strain plus live R strain again transformation did not happen and the mouse survived. Now this suggested that DNA has to be the genetic material which is responsible for this. Now Hershey's and Chase experiment to confirm DNA as a genetic material. What was their experiment? Hershey's and Chase worked on bacteriophages which was viruses infected bacteria. And when a bacteriophage infected a bacterium, the viral genetic material got attached with the bacterial genetic material and then the bacteria treats the viral genetic material as its own to synthesize more viral particles. And this is how that bacteria was infected by virus. Now Hershey's and Chad, they worked to the discovery whether it was a protein or a DNA which entered the bacteria from virus. So now they labeled some phages with radioactive sulfur and others with radioactive phosphorus, sulfur and phosphorus which were radioactive. 
Now, radioactive phages were used to infect E. coli ultimately and E. coli was then blended and centrifuged to the removal of particles, viral particles in it. And it was observed that the bacteria with radioactive DNA were radioactive while radioactive proteins lost their radioactivity. So, radioactive DNA were radioactive whereas, radioactive proteins lost their radioactivity. Okay. And this ultimately showed that DNA is the one which enters the bacteria from viruses and not the proteins. Hence, it was concluded that DNA is the genetic material which is responsible for transformation. So, this is the procedure how infection blending centrifuge. So, now this is how the infection is caused and the blending is done and the centrifugation the whole procedure is done. Now, properties of the genetic material. So, it should be able to replicate uh, that means it should be able to produce the duplicates of its identical copies and then it should be chemically and structurally stable and it should have scope for changes which are essential for evolution and it should follow the Mendelian principles of inheritance and there are few differences between the RNA and DNA. What are they? The DNA has deoxyribose sugar but here RNA has only ribose sugar and 5-methyluracil which is thymine is present and uracil is present in place of thymine here and mostly DNA acts as genetic material, RNA will act as messenger and adapter and it will act as a genetic material in some of the viruses like your COVID. Now, DNA is stable and presence of 2OH group at every nucleotide will make RNA liable, uh, sorry, labile and easily biodegradable. Now, chemically less reactive and mutates very slowly and this is having a faster mutation. Now, DNA requires RNA for protein synthesis which is DNA to RNA and then proteins but RNA can directly code for proteins respectively. And why is DNA more stable than RNA? In RNA, the 2OH group is present at every nucleotide and this is going to make RNA unstable and degradable easily. And presence of thymine in place of uracil will confer additional stability to the DNA. So, this is the 5-methyluracil which will create and gives more stability for thymine. And RNA being a biocatalyst, it is more reactive. Whereas, DNA is double stranded having complementary strands which resist the changes by repair mechanism. And DNA replication with the help of proof machinery and the enzymes involved. So, what is DNA replication basically? It is a phenomenon in which the duplicate copy of DNA is synthesized. Now, replication uh, two strands of DNA helix will separate and each strand will act as a template for the synthesis of new complementary stands. Now, after completion of replication, two copies so produced will have one parental and one newly synthesized strand and this scheme of replication is called semi-conservative replications. Next, experiment which will prove DNA replicates semi-conservative. So, now it was performed by Melson and Stahl. Now, equally was grown in a medium containing heavy isotopes of 15N the nitrogen source. <coughs> now, 15N was incorporated into newly synthesized DNA as well as the DNA became very heavy DNA. Now, heavy DNA molecule can be differentiated from the normal DNA by the density gradient centrifugation using the cesium chloride as a gradient and then the cells were again transferred into a medium with 14N as nitrogen source and samples were taken from this media and the DNA was extracted. Now, E. coli. E. coli divided every 20 minutes and therefore, the DNA extracted after 20 minutes had a hybrid density and DNA extracted after 40 minutes had equal amounts of hybrid and lighter intensities and then this will imply that newly synthesized DNA obtained one of its strand from the parent and thus replication is semi-conservative. So, this is how it happened. Firstly, it was with 15 N and then it was with 14 and 15 N and then it was purely of 14, 15 N. Now, mechanism of DNA replication. So, replication will occur in the S phase of cell cycle and enzymes involved in are DNA polymerase which is DNA dependent DNA polymerase and replication requires energy and sources of energy are deoxyribonucleosides, triphosphates which is DNTPs. And then DNTPs have dual purpose which is they act as substrates and they also provide energy. 
and replication will initiate at a specific region in DNA called the origin of replication and DNA polymerase will polymerize the large number of nucleotides in a very short time and during the course of replication two parent strands will not completely open but a small opening will form in which replication is going to occur and this is called the replication fork and DNA polymerase can polymerize only one uh, I mean only in one direction which is 3 prime to 5 prime and therefore replication will occur smoothly at 3 to 5 prime end so it is 3 prime to 5 prime end of the DNA and continuous replication but occurs discontinuously at the ends and discontinued fragments so formed are the joint I mean they are joined by DNA ligase so this is how the newly synthesized strands are going to get ligased by DNA ligase enzyme now transcription unit structure and its relationship with the gene transcription so transcription is a process of formation of the RNA molecules from the DNA and during transcription only a segment of DNA from only one of the strands is going to participate and not both the strands are will participating and both strands are not copied during transcription because if both are copied or transcribed at the same time since sequences of amino acids would be different in both because of their complementarity then the RNA molecules with different sequences will be formed which is in turn giving rise to two different proteins respectively therefore only one DNA would be end up giving rise to two different proteins now two RNA molecules so form will complementary each other and they end up forming a double stranded RNA leaving the entire process of transcription futile.